Okay, so in this video what we're going to discuss is uh, zinc finger nucleases. Okay, so these are a, um, a um, artificial type of endonuclease, basically. So zinc finger nucleases. So firstly, let me just define for you what a restriction endonuclease is. So a restriction endonuclease is any enzyme uh, which cuts DNA at a specific recognition site. So a restriction endonuclease. Okay, so basically uh, you have to have, uh, he, let's say here is your DNA, and basically restriction endonucleases are enzymes which, fi which go along to a specific um, a specific sequence of bases, basically. So, for instance, um, the um, EcoR1 enzyme, I believe, uses the code uh, GAA uh, TTC. I should probably just check that. Let me just check. Uh, where's my notes of EcoR1? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so the EcoR1 enzyme uses this sequence, and basically it will find DNA with this sequence, and it will cut at that specific sequence. Uh, so uh, I'll just put in the other complementary strand here. Okay, so EcoR1 comes along, binds to DNA where it finds this sequence, so it will bind, let's say here, this is our EcoR1 restriction endonuclease, here, yeah, bound to the DNA at this specific uh, sequence of organic bases that it recognises. So this is the EcoR1 restriction endonuclease. And basically, it will cut the DNA there. But it won't just cut the DNA anywhere. It has to cut it at that re uh, specific recognition site. So this is the recognition site for EcoR1. Okay, right. Uh, so, now what we're going to discuss is zinc finger nucleases, and they are a type of restriction endonuclease. So they recognise a specific sequence of organic bases in DNA, and then they produce a cut. The difference between them and a restriction endonuclease like EcoR1 is that EcoR1 we got from nature, basically. Uh, we got directly from nature. It's found in E. coli, basically, and it y is used by E. coli to protect itself against viral DNA which is being implanted into uh, the bacterium. Okay, uh, so zinc finger nucleases are slightly different. We made these, uh, we made these basically, they are synthetic, but we used uh, biologically found molecules in order to make them. So the actual enzyme which does the cutting in zinc finger nucleases is found in nature and um, the zinc fingers themselves that recognize a specific DNA sequence, again, those are found in nature. So let's say we have some DNA, let's say we have these two double, uh, the double strand of DNA, and I'm not drawing it like that because it makes it look more complicated if we've got like, it like that. So basically I'm just going to draw, put in some an arbitrary sequence of letters basically. So let's have A, G, T, C, A, T, T, C, I'm making these up, so it's, it's not important. Uh, C, A, uh, T, because you can make zinc finger nucleases that will recognise whatever sequence you like, basically. So C, G, and that'll do. Okay, and we'll just add a few more in here. A, T, right, and then we'll put the complementary one in here. A, T, T, C, A, G, T, A, A, uh, G, C, G, T, A, G, C. So thanks for bearing with me for that. Right, so I've made a piece of DNA here. Right, have I got the right number here that I need? Uh, there's that. Here. Uh, we need one more. Let's just add in one more here. A, T. In fact, let's add in two more. C, G. Okay, right. So basically, what a zinc finger endonuclease is, uh, sorry, a zinc finger nuclease is, but you could call it an endonuclease if you like, is it's um, manufactured from an enzyme which is an endonuclease, and it's also manufactured from these things called zinc fingers. So I think firstly we need to discuss what a zinc finger is, basically. So a zinc finger is basically just a protein, 
uh, which recognises and binds to DNA. And the reason it's called zinc finger is because the structure of the protein, so let's, let's say I'm drawing one down here. Let's say, in fact, we'll draw it here. Let's say this is going to be a zinc finger. Um, protein, and basically the structure of a zinc finger, the way in which that protein folds up, is completely determined by a zinc ion in there. So you basically have a zinc ion uh, which coordinates the folding of this protein. So you have lots of the groups of the protein interacting with a zinc ion which sits at the, at the centre of it. So basically the folding of uh, this protein into its native shape is completely determined, but well, it's it's completely dependent upon this zinc ion, which is caught, which is folding the protein, and groups are interacting with this zinc ion at specific points, and that folds the protein into its structure. Okay, so zinc fingers are just proteins which recognise. Uh, DNA, which recognise certain DNA sequences, and specifically they recognise triplets of um, of base pairs, basically. So they recognise codons. So uh, if I draw a zinc finger here, it might bind to this specific codon ATA, basically. So I might have a zinc finger like that, that specifically binds to ATA. So it will bind in, at um, portions along your uh, DNA double helix where it finds ATA. So basically, the way in which you make a zinc finger nuclease is you attach together lots of these zinc fingers uh, which recognise codons so that you can make structures that will only bind now if uh, they recognise a larger sequence. So for instance, if I attach in another zinc finger here, which this time this zinc finger can recognise the sequence AGT rather than uh, ATA, so it recognises the codon AGT, uh, then if I attach them together, this overall complex here will now only rec will now only bind if it's got ATA and AGT. So now we're getting more specific now. Right, now what you do is, uh, say you want it to cut at this specific site here, then uh, you also uh, make another pair, another um, another zinc finger structure over here. So you'll make a zinc finger structure uh, which binds to this GCG thing down here, this codon. So here's another zinc finger. And then finally you'll attach that to another zinc finger here, which will recognise the codon GTA. Okay, what colour should I colour that one in? I'll colour this one in yellow. And basically now, what you want, what the aim of our zinc finger nuclease was, uh, is it was going to is it's going to cut in this portion here. So in these six nucleotides here, it's going to cut. And basically what you do is you attach on half of the nuclease to this joint pair of zinc fingers here, and you attach on the other half of the zinc finger, nucle of the nuclease of the zinc finger nuclease um, onto here. And basically the nuclease we use is something called FOKL, which we got from bacterium. So, okay, so you have these two zinc fingers, and then to the zinc fingers you attach uh, half of the enzyme FOKL. And basically, now what's going to happen is if we put both of these uh, zinc finger structures in, which are, each of these is half of the zinc finger nuclease, basically, what's going to happen is that they're both going to bind in their specific places. And now the two halves of the FOKL uh, nuclease, endonuclease, are going to join together, so uh, these will join together and form a functional uh, endonuclease basically, and that will then cut, um, it will cut in this region here basically. And what's brilliant about this enzyme FOKL is it is not specific basically, it will cut wherever it can, and it produces sticky ends, so the way in which it cuts is it cuts like so, it cuts uh, it cuts basically um, to leave these overhangs of four nucleotides, basically. Okay, um, so um, FOKL will cut when you um, when you create the uh, dimer of the two halves, basically. So that means that you can make this recognize whatever sequence you like, really, because you can vary these zinc fingers to so that they will uh, bind to whichever codons you like, basically. And usually, when you're making these zinc finger nucleases, what you do is you don't use two of these zinc fingers. You can use as many as you like. Usually, the most common number to use is three. 
so that on each of these sides you are recognizing uh, nine nucleotides basically. So overall, the zinc finger nucleotide needs 18 nucleotides to be correct. It needs all of these nine nucleotides to be correct, and then it needs these nine nucleotides to be the right nucleotides as well. Uh, so it needs 18 of them to be specific values, and they also have to obviously be split apart in this exact way. I, you need nine here, then you need six in between that can be whatever you like, and then you need nine on the complementary strand that are specific as well. Uh, so this makes us a highly specific um, Z zinc finger nuclei, uh, well, it makes us a highly specific nuclease that's going to recognize specific sites in DNA. And this is why these things are more important and more useful than restriction endonucleases, because ECOR1 just cuts whenever it finds this uh, recognition site here. And that recognition site is going to show up quite a lot in the human genome, let's say. So, uh, if you use this enzyme to try and do anything, you are going to cut absolutely loads of human human DNA up, whereas these things, these zinc finger nucleases, you can target them to portions, uh, recognition sequences of DNA that are absolutely massive and will probably only show up maybe once in the entire human genome, and that's a much more powerful tool because it allows us to make cuts at specific points in the human genome, which is very, very useful. Okay, and there's a lot of research into how these uh, zinc finger nucleases may well be useful in gene therapy, and it potentially uh, there's research into using them to uh, treat HIV. Okay, so one last little revision then. So, um, zinc finger nuclease is the entire thing. It's made up of lots of zinc fingers, and it's made up of uh, this FOKL enzyme. So you split this FOKL uh, enzyme into two subunits, basically, which need to dimerize in order to actually make a functional um, endonuclease. Then what you do is you create, um, you cr attach each half to zinc fingers, and you can put as many on as you like, and that, uh, the zinc fingers will then bind to a specific specific uh, combination of organic uh, of organic bases in the DNA and so will it uh, the other side uh, so will the other zinc fingers attached to the other half then if they've bound to this exact place the FOKL um, di uh, ends up two halves will dimerize and that will then uh, cut your DNA and produce a double strand break and uh, this very, very targeted nuclease action is what makes these zinc finger nucleases very attractive.